What's up, everybody? Um, first of all, I want to apologize for whatever the hell is going on here. Um, I look like a Dutch boy that just got done churning some cream and is now on his way inside to set the table before we eat a bunch of fucking rare cheeses and goat's milk, whatever. Um, my name's Casey Ryan. Welcome to The Starving Artist, episode four. Um... I'm going to start off and read a couple sponsors here real quick, and then we'll get going. Uh, the Starving Artist is brought to you by Breathe Love Guitars, the hallmark and mission to create perfect acoustic sound, to match that sound with effortless playability, and to create a clean, modern, aesthetic instrument is the sole purpose of Breathe Love. Head over to breedlovemusic.com to check out their entire collection of a vast array of acoustic and acoustic electric instruments. Breathe Love Guitars, play better, sound better. Starving Artist is also brought to you by G7th Capo Company. G7th Capos are the most powerful and dynamic capos on the market today. Seamless playability and adjustments with ease and a huge selection to suit the needs of any live performer or simply anyone who plays guitar and needs to adjust keys for faster vocal to guitar transitions. Head over to g7th.com and browse their online shop now and see all of the deals that they're offering. Again, that is g7th.com. All right. Well, um, welcome to episode four and uh, episode. Welcome to episode four, and uh, yeah, we're we're fucking doing it. So um, I want to say real quick, like, you know, I this is something I wanted to do for a really long time, and it's something I definitely put off for a very long time. And uh, you know, given the circumstances of the world, I've been able to do it, and it's it's taking off well. And I appreciate you guys. More than you'll ever know, especially the people that have supported on Patreon, which, by the way, if any of you would like to support the podcast, it really helps the show grow. So if you head over to Patreon, I'll put a link in the description box, and uh, you can subscribe for about five bucks a month or more if you choose to. Otherwise, again, it's not a big deal, but um, also a huge thank you to the sponsors. You know, being grateful for this is an understatement, so thank you. Um, Wanted to announce as well that the podcast is now available on Spotify and within the week will be available on, probably by the time that this airs, will be available on Apple Podcasts as well. And so, you know, you'll have a bunch of different options for for checking it out or listening or whether you want to watch the video, that's still on YouTube, whatever you guys want to do. Also, next week, I am possibly having my first guest, but I'm not sure about that yet. Still have to work out a few of the details. But um, really good friend of mine, very insightful person too, and uh, I think that um, he can offer a lot of insights, you know, to just further the point of kind of what I'm trying to express in this podcast. But uh, that's happening definitely in the near future, but I'm not quite sure when, possibly next week, but it might be the week after. So today it's going to be a little more off the cuff. I type out these, I've been typing out these outlines of, you know, stuff I want to cover in the show just so I cover all the things. Because my my brain is like, I mean, if you haven't noticed or if you follow me on social media or whatever, my brain is kind of, um, for lack of a better term, insane. So it helps me to have, you know, a little bit of structure. Although, you know, when I, of course, when I have a guest, it'll be easier to kind of go off the cuff. But today I'm going to, you know, branch out from um, not music topics solely. Um, I think that when I started this, I kind of had the intention of just doing a music centered podcast, which definitely I I will still do. I'll have musicians as guests, you know, I'll talk about, you know, music related, um, I guess issues, (laughs) um, in the future. But as of now, I, I just feel that, you know, with the current state of the world, you know, the world literally being on fire and just with the intensive political and societal division and polarization that that we're experiencing right now I think it's important that we um that we talk we talk about certain things that can help us manage our mental health and that's kind of what I think the topic of today is going to be about um I think that perhaps all of us could could also benefit from logical and objective ways of thinking something that I think 
the lack of is ruining the fabric of society. So today I want to discuss something that, you know, you know, a 20 or 30 minute or even a five hour conversation really isn't long enough to cover, let alone even try to solve. But that is in some ways um, in which I think we can at least begin to manage our mental health in the midst of ever changing, oftentimes irrational modern society that we live in. Um, so, I mean, I guess let's just take it back to the start of the year. So, you know, a lot of these American and global issues stem back farther than this, but you know, if we think about the wildfires in Australia, we had COVID, massive and unheard of unemployment, a national and global race uprising, you know, the, the basic unveiling of child sex trafficking and human trafficking across the world, and, and again, perhaps the greatest division both politically and societally that citizens in our country and the world has ever seen. We have... In addition to that, we have two candidates running for the leadership of the free world. And again, I want to, just as a caveat, I, I not only really don't care about politics, and I'm not versed enough to know enough about it. Um, obviously, I have a general sense of it, but I'm going to try to not involve politics so much in this podcast because, again, I'm just not a credible source to speak on it. And also, if I'm just being honest, I just don't really give a shit. But um, we do have two candidates that I think that, if we're speaking honestly, have really no interest in helping the American people, despite their claims to want to do so. One of which, you know, most likely has dementia, and the other, obviously, a lot of people can agree, is, you know, a psychopath in his own way. <laughs> Um, but again, I, I really don't care what your political beliefs are. I don't, I, I just, I just don't care. Um, this conversation, I want to center on how people as individuals can enact change within themselves and manage their own mental and physical health, you know, during this time. So I think that it's, it's nearly impossible for any logical human being to feel hopeful and optimistic about the future when the world around us is crumbling. But, um, if you're an honest person and you, and you have any semblance of self-awareness, you have to admit that the left and the right are basically two sides of the same coin. Um, whatever we think of as differences is among people is most likely just a difference in societal, religious, moral upbringing. You know, there's 320 million people plus in America, and for any one person to act like they have the answers as to what society should do as a whole and and how people should act and behave, given the fact that those parameters exist, you know, the different upbringings and styles of, of humans throughout the country. Um, I, I just think it's a really arrogant and naive interpretation. And it's personally, I think it's just a really unhealthy way to go about living life, trying, trying to do that. Um, it's no judgment for people that are trying to do it, but I guess just to give a little bit of, you know, my own... Sorry, I keep doing that. I need to fix that. Um, <laughs> I need to give my own credibility toward today's topic. So just a little bit of background on me. I have a bachelor's degree in communication studies, a master's degree in social psychology, and a doctorate in clinical interpersonal psychotherapy. That includes 18, 1,800 hours of clinical shadowing in mental health facilities with clients from anywhere from sociopathy to psychopathy, you know, extreme impulsive disorders, addictions, grief. Um, that was my specialty and a big, a large portion of my dissertation was centered around grief and addictions counseling and how to manage that. Um, additionally, I have 500 hours certified of vinyasa and hatha and ashtanga yoga training from Prajna Yoga and something that I think that has given me the ability to deeply analyze and examine the dark parts of myself uh, in addition to having many experiences with psychedelic medicines, as I call them, I don't like to call them drugs, but including psilocybin, uh, that's been the primary one that's benefited my life, uh, LSD, or acid as it's known, or and also MDMA, otherwise known as ecstasy. Something, um, things that again, like under the right circumstances can be overwhelmingly beneficial to your perception of existence and your place in it. Um, lastly, I've been heartbroken. I've, I've broken hearts. I've experienced deaths of family, of 
of, of women that I've dated, of friends. Um, and, you know, just being in over, I, I've traveled to over 30 countries playing music, and I feel as though I'm qualified to speak on the state of other cultures as well in relation to ours. I say these things not to be, you know, I'm not trying to be some braggadocious asshole, but I just want you all that are listening or watching to know that I'm not just some idiot singing sad songs, like acting like he knows things about the world, which is definitely true to an extent. But yes, I do feel confident in my ability to effectively analyze the world, analyze myself, my place in it, and how to go about forthrightly into it. So, um, 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 take a shot every time I say, um, and you'll be drunk very fast. <laughs> Step one to managing your mental health in this crazy society, change yourself. Um, there it is again. I wanted to say the most important one right off the bat. It's, uh, it's an, it's an ultimate and universal truth that changing yourself first is the first step to enacting any kind of change on a global scale or a societal scale. It's a famous quote, you've all heard it, and it's timeless, but especially now is more relevant than ever. Be the change you want to see in the world. You know, Gandhi had a, had a beautiful vision when he said that. I firmly believe that change on any scale starts with you, and it is nearly impossible and quite frankly arrogant, again, to think that you, you can enact change without changing yourself first. So... The extreme right and the extreme left, you know, despite, despite that honest truth about knowing how to change yourself first, and that's the only way that you can enact change, the extreme left and the extreme right have a tireless pursuit to try to change the other to see their side, which, as another relevant phrase goes, a person is smart and people are dumb. Uh, I'm not saying these things to try to knock what social justice is trying to, to, to accomplish. I don't knock what Trump supporters are trying to convey, that they somehow think that they know the president on a personal level, which is asinine. But I'm saying that it, it simply will never work. The way that we're, the model that we're going about it currently, it's never going to work. If you look at any time in human history, since the dawn of people's existence, we have in some relevant sense, been at war with each other or in conflict. Conflict. Why? Because by nature, and we will always be until perhaps God decides to miraculously and deliberately dose everyone with mushrooms, we're going to be tribal and feel as though we can only be on the team and support the team that supports and believes what we believe. And again, this is a model for conflict that unfortunately is winning. And for the life of me, I can't understand why. And there's, again, there's so many things that I would like to say to these, to people that, that, that are just devoting their life to arguing, but I suppose that's not my place because the point of this first topic is changing yourself. So by changing yourself, believe it or not, I believe is the most simple and elegant solution to these problems. This comes by, I think, first of all, normalizing the ability to admit when you're wrong when when you might have a belief that could be harmful or or potentially offensive to another person and and also the ability to remain objective in the face of the temptation to succumb to subjective truths that people believe what they believe as opposed to you having the strength and confidence to believe what you believe and also just accept what they believe and and I'll get on. I'll get into that in the in the next step to what I believe is a good step in managing mental health in this in this current society. But first of all, to continue, I'm not here, nor will I ever be, to try and change someone at their core, because that can only be done by them. We can express our opinions, but honestly, as long as those opinions aren't harmful or violent to toward another or a group of people, then we have no existential right to say what they believe is wrong, because. The first part of changing yourself, just to be blunt and real, is to leave people the fuck alone. Just leave them alone. Let them, if, as long as they're not, again, as long as they're not deliberately going out of their way to hurt or harm somebody else, then why the fuck do you care what they're doing? It shouldn't matter to you. Just live your life, change yourself. Now you can also, to take this one step further, I think that a big part of changing yourself is also changing the physical part of you because I, I believe 100% that physical exertion 
and respecting yourself enough to take care of your body is not only a sign of self-love, but also an indicator of the desire to be better, which is at the core of changing yourself. And you know, that that's the constant push to grow, evolve, and repeatedly shed the dark parts of yourself in light of the lighter parts of yourself and replace those parts with with love and compassion and grace and empathy, most most importantly. And that includes diet. You know, and, and again, like a diet conversation is maybe a conversation for another time. Um, because again, that's another very po- polarizing topic, even though everybody has different needs based on their genetics and their autoimmune disorders or whatever they may have. But anyways, this also includes, you know, not going to a bar every weekend and poisoning yourself because... Again, I'm just keeping it real with you guys, and I'm sorry, but that's a crutch, and it's only a coping mechanism that's going to make everything you're dealing with infinitely worse. So instead, I think it's important to not say that you shouldn't drink or shouldn't partake in things, because that's silly, but just to have the discipline enough to moderate and also have the discipline enough to care about what goes into your body, because only then that that will create lasting and pure change. Um... But yeah, people, you know, people have this illusion, I think, that the mind and body are separate entities, despite both of them being a part of the same organ, which is your body. So when one suffers, the other one does too. And I believe wholeheartedly that by changing yourself physically, you can change yourself mentally. So read, study, exercise, meditate. You know, one of, I heard this quote, and I can't remember who it's by, but It basically says that one of humankind's biggest problems is that he or she can't sit alone quietly in a room for longer than 10 minutes without going crazy. And and that's a fucking problem, especially in the culture that we live in right now. Like every I'm not saying that these tools like cell phones and social media, email, podcasting, I'm not saying that these things are are all evil, but they do carry a lot of weight to them when it comes to being present and mindful and like being able to truly change yourself because all of your attention is wrapped up in the aimless and screaming shouting of tirelessly being on social media all day because we're we're, we're not equipped to handle that amount of information we're just our uh, I just watched the social dilemma and they outline this crazy on Netflix it says uh they basically say that you know Technology has evolved two trillion times over since the 1950s, but the human brain has remained the same. So thinking in in those terms, this stuff, it's poisonous to a degree if you're addicted to it and you need to be able to moderate it. So that, that comes with changing yourself. So, you know, of all the people just, you know, running around and trying to convey their opinion in in a manner that makes them feel that they're doing something of value... Let them do it and just stop. Change yourself and you change the world. You change yourself, you inspire change and surround yourself with people who do the same thing. So let's move on to step two. This is one uh, also I think that is very important and extremely neglected. Number two, listen to opposing views. You know, I guess in some ways this can be tied to changing yourself, but... Oftentimes, even when you change yourself, it's next to impossible trying to listen to some individuals who really at their core are just so unhappy and and bored that all they have to do is ruminate on destroying what they see as their enemy, you know, namely liberals, conservatives, Republicans, whatever it may be. But again, I'm I'm trying to avoid political conversations at all costs, at least for now, maybe until I have guests or maybe somebody that's a little more versed in that area. But but again, I just don't give a shit, so perhaps that makes me part of the problem. I don't know. But I choose to focus on the internal, not the external. Anyways, one of the biggest problems um, human beings are facing on a national and global scale is the inability to even have a conversation with someone who, who disagrees with them. There, there, are literally, there are literally people in this world that won't talk to you if you like, like the Seahawks. Hey, it's a fucking game and it does not matter. And if you think it does, then I'm out. I'm sorry. Like people obsess about these, these things so deeply and they let it consume them to a degree that is un, 
is you can't even fathom it. And they think that these things matter and they fucking don't. But just in the likes of society, right right now, like COVID, oh my, like, oh my God. Guess what? If you think COVID isn't a problem to a certain group of people, then you're not a fucking biologist. So stop. And also, if you think that COVID is as big of a threat as the mul- is the mainstream media and everybody made it out to be, then you're wrong. And because if it was, then everybody would be dead. And that's not taking away from the people that have died because that's awful. But what I'm saying is we as the everyday citizen have zero idea what the powers that be want us to really believe and see. And if you think that you do, you're delusional, okay? But regardless, what I'm saying at the basis here, like if someone says something, this might be crazy, but if you're scrolling on Facebook or scrolling on Instagram and, and, and I don't know, if you're like me, it, I see that it infests every moment that I'm on it, these platforms anyway, but no matter what the topic is, if you see this stuff, someone's right to say how they feel has nothing to do with you. And, and this might blow your mind again, but you don't have to respond. You can just simply move on with your life. And, and even more than that, as far as the, you know, the, the topic at hand, which is what we're, what we're talking about, is listening to them. I have friends of all walks of life. I have rich friends. I have poor friends, black, white, gay, lesbian. And I know that you say that and that automatically makes you racist or, or, or whatever, but I'm not, I'm not talking about that. I'm just saying that given the right circumstances, aka an in-person conversation where I actually can see the person's face, effectively communicate them, read their social cues, see how they're reacting to what I'm saying and vice versa, then I will gladly listen and welcome anything that that person has to say. And, I, and even further than that, if they're, if they're bringing up information that could be conducive to the betterment of our friendship and maybe enhance my viewpoint, like I'll, I'll change my opinion. You know, not, not even for the sake of my own pride and my own desire to be right, because I think everybody has that to a degree, but just for the sake of civility and being a fucking human, like you have to be able to listen to these people and we don't listen to each other. A huge problem I think is, you know, we don't call each other anymore. We text each other. And like, for example, if I'm texting you and I say, uh, hey, asshole, fuck you. If I say that to one of my friends, and by the way, I'm, I'm full on cussing now. So sorry, but yeah, that's what we're doing. <laughs> Uh, if I, if I say that to one of my friends over a text, they might read that and be like, well, what did I do? And like, holy, holy shit, like I'm freaking out. You know, what did I say or do to upset him? But if I said that in person to one of my friends and like shrugged him on the shoulder, they'd be like, oh, okay, he's just messing around. That's the part that, that gets lost in these ineffective methods of communication, namely Facebook, Instagram, texting, you know, whatever it is in a, in a text form, you, you can't effectively read people. And these methods of communicating to each other might seem like they're connecting us, but if anything, they're disconnecting us even further. People aren't evil. You know, I think at everybody's core, we all want the same thing. We all want health, sustainability. And if we can't agree on that simple premise and shed this bullshit tribal mentality, then we're doomed. People are flawed. You know, people are imperfect. And if you think that you're ever going to encounter somebody who isn't, then you're just, you're living the wrong way. And we, we have to be able to actively listen to what uh, the other person is saying and perhaps even allowing ourselves the chance to change our opinion if, again, if credible information is presented. So I'm passionate about this topic. So, you know, I apologize, you know, if, you know, well, actually, you know what, I, you know, I don't apologize. Because I think that it's it's something that I feel is is important to talk about. But let me do these ads and we'll we'll move on. The Starving Artist is brought to you by Flight Sport Supplements. At Flight, we are passionate about two things: faith and fitness. We as an organization exist to provide you with great products and information to help you build a healthy body and achieve your fitness goals. Um, I've used the liquid multivitamin, the liquid greens, and flight rest because my sleep is awful. And flight rest is one of a few supplements that has actually aided my sleep. You know, and I wear this whoop strap and it tells me how recovered I am. And it's, it's been immensely beneficial in, in helping my sleep. Um, 
they're all they're all all their products are for a reasonable price reasonable price the liquid multivitamin and the greens last about a month if you only do one serving a day and then the flat rest also can they, they have a big selection of products um they have a red supplement you know like beets nitric oxide stuff like that but um head over to flight supplements.com or excuse me flight sport.com use promo code casey ryan music for 10 percent off at checkout that's flight sport.com promo code casey ryan music for 10 percent off at checkout great company and they're faith-based so you'd be supporting you know if you're if you're a christian you, you'd be supporting a company that also supports uh the pursuit of faith um the starving artist is also brought to you by liquid iv liquid iv's mission is to help everywhere live better people everywhere live better lives to optimize the body hydrate those in need and better the planet from the electrolyte multiplier to the triple hydration single use packets liquid iv is becoming a staple in the hydration game as an and is an incredible product for anyone looking to expand their overall health and fitness visit liquid-iv.com Use promo code Casey Ryan Music at checkout for 20% off. Again, that's liquid-iv.com. Use promo code Casey Ryan Music for 20% off at checkout. Make sure we're still rolling here. Okay. Okay, so getting back, getting back to this. Um, number three. Be grateful for what's good. Gratitude's the attitude, baby. It's a silly rhyme, but it's a good rhyme, and it's so important. And I'll be honest here, I've, I spent the majority of my 20s and my early adult life, and even now, you know, being ungrateful, being bitter, being just an angry cunt, dude. And that's, the, and that's just the truth. And it, it ruined, it's ruined every relationship I've ever had with women. It's, it's jeopardized friendships, and God knows how many opportunities that I passed up on simply based on the fact that I was just, my fucking mindset sucked, you know, but only through step one, changing myself, Step two, actively listening to people that are far more intelligent than I am and advanced than I am in life, you know, and a lot of podcasts that offer those insights, I was able to move on to this step, which is being grateful. And it's, <laughs> to be honest, it's hard at first and then it gets easier. But yeah, you know, just to err on the side of honesty here, it's, it's, it's fucking hard to be grateful, especially when shit sucks. Because like when your bills are paid, everything's fine, you know, it's, it's easy to be grateful. It's easy to be, it's easy to be happy when everything, when, it, when you're happy. Um, but right, I mean, right now my music career is essentially fucked. You know, I have one show scheduled in the next, you know, however long we're going to be doing this for compared to typically hundreds I have. And that's, that's my livelihood, you know, which is why, but I, I've had to make the conscious, conscious and intentional decision to, to reframe the shittiness into brightness, you know? So I started the podcast you know, and hopefully this can be a method of income for me eventually, or at least a passive income. But here's how I know that you have shit to be grateful for. For one thing, you're listening to this or watching this. So that means at least you have a phone or at least internet and a computer. You know, you're most likely wearing clothes. Although if you're not, hey, I don't judge what you're into. Uh, you're breathing air, which is a miracle on its own. And most likely all of those, if all of those previous things are true, you're, you're not on the street and you're not starving. You know, are we all stressed? Definitely. Are we all worried? If you weren't, then I think you were crazy. And angry? I, I can't imagine, especially how you know, minority groups are feeling right now and just a lot of people that have been disenfranchised, not to mention just the general population that's been unemployed and affected by this or on the other side that have lost loved ones. I mean, people are fucking angry, but that doesn't mean that doesn't mean that you should think only of everything that's wrong because there is so much that is right. And there's so much that is out there to be thankful for. You know, I'm, I'm naturally a negative and just, I'm a negative and pessimistic fuck, but <laughs> I, I make it a point in my, in my daily meditations, in my breathing exercises, and all the things that I do in order for me to be sane, which is a lot um, compared to the normal person that can just wake up and live life. Um, I make it a point to recite the things that I'm grateful for out loud. And, and I tell you that it makes, it makes all the difference. You know, whether it's our wives, our husbands, our boyfriends, girlfriends, jobs, cars, even this, even right now what's recording this, this fucking supercomputer that fits in our pocket. It's, we take it for granted because it's easy to take for granted because it's so formulaic and part of our daily life. But, but 
I can tell I can't I can't tell you how important it is to not take those things for granted and, and be thankful for them every day because I'll tell you from personal experience, when you take things for granted that once made you feel like you're you're on top of the world and then they're gone, that's a level of regret and guilt that I can't begin to express. Um you know, losing people to you that you know it's your fault and you know it's because of things that you've done or how you behaved because you simply just couldn't see the good in it. And more importantly, you couldn't see the good in yourself. But I, I can tell you right now that gratitude is the most important thing and it's something that I've had to actively change about myself every day. And, and yeah, I mean, that, it's as simple as that. Be grateful. Just don't lose sight of the good things because there, there's so much to be grateful for. And it's, I get it. It's hard, but it's so important. And, and if I can tell you anything to take away from this besides changing yourself and listening effectively, it's make a gratitude practice. Promise it'll be worth it. So in conclusion, you know, the world is an uncertain and crazy place right now. And none of us have any idea where it's heading in the future. And... And, you know, we don't know where things are going, but the one thing that we can take control over and manage is our mental health in this modern society. So whatever you're going through, if you make an intentional effort to change yourself, to listen effectively, and have an intention, intentional and active practice of gratitude, you can truly enact change for society and the world around you. And you can go into the world with strength and an ability to overcome because only we only become mentally and physically strong through immense physical and mental pain and suffering. And I wish that wasn't a truth of life, but it is. And that pain and suffering is manageable if we choose to go down the hard path and change these things. Nothing changes if nothing changes. So, anyways, uh, this is the longest one we've done. They're probably gonna be maybe around this length, you know, 30 minutes. Hopefully that's still digestible for you guys. Um, and I really, and I really, hope that you guys can take something from this you and that's my only goal I just I really I think it's important to have these conversations because for some reason nobody's having them and it's all about just judging the other side and judging a person who's different than us and I, I'm just quite frankly I'm just fucking fed up with it and I think that we can be better and we can all do better so anyways please like and subscribe support the pod- podcast on patreon there's a link in the description box please that really helps the show grow so please support the show on patreon follow me on spotify now with the podcast and also my music if you'd like to on um, all of my social media which is all linked in the description box as well i will see you guys next week and thank you that's it everything i've kept up inside of me is having its way with me i can't hold on and nothing i've let go of has ever been